The Samsung Galaxy Watch Ultra is on my wrist, guys, and if you have missed my unboxing, my test running with the watch and with the Buds 3, also my full tour, then please go and watch those videos. But what I'm doing right now, as you might see already, I'm using a very nice tool, Bud Jaeger, hmm, connected to the Watch Ultra, and I'm installing some tools. And why am I doing this? Well, I just wanted to get the hardware information. I often use some very standard tools when I'm reviewing phones to check on the CPU, the configuration to check also on the camera, check the various sensors to check also of course the battery and the storage and since I was not able to find something like that on the Play Store for the watch then I decided just to sideload it. So uh, with this tool, the Bug Jaeger, you are able to sideload of kinds of apps. I tried to sideload by the way, Facebook didn't really work and X. So the tool that I'm using it called the Bug Jaeger. It's really available directly from the Play Store. I tried to install Geekbench just for the fun but I failed but if you want to know how that's done, connecting the phone via wireless, debugging ADB to your watch, then just go inside the settings, software information. Once you're there, you just need to press several times on the software information. And then when that's done, you're gonna get access to the developer's options. So what I do here inside, I enable ADB debugging, and then I also go and I enable wireless debugging. When you enable wireless debugging, you're gonna see there is an IP address and also a port. Once you're in the tool, you can just scroll to the right. When you get to the packages, just press here on that button and then you can connect to your watch. If you press the connect button, you should be able to connect. If that really doesn't work for you, then you have also the option to pair a new device the way I did. You're gonna get a code so you can click here to pair and just enter the code. At some point, guys, you will connect to the watch and then the Bug Jaeger will read all installed applications that are on the watch right now together with some log information. So there's really, really a lot of stuff. And this is how I was able to install device info hardware. Again, this is a tool that I use really in a lot of my phone reviews. I really like it and luckily it works on the watch. So we already know a lot of things about this watch. So it's not a hidden thing. The Exynos chipset inside uses a three nanometer process is the Exynos W1000. So it should be very much efficient. And the interesting part is guys, it is also using a big little core setup compared to let's say previous watches. So here for some reason, because it's a brand new chip, the tool recognizes Exynos 5535. All right, but we can see it has five cores, all right? The big little like two cores, so we have one that is running at a 1.6 gigahertz and four cores running at 1.5 gigahertz. We can see that this first core is Cortex A78 and the other four ones are Cortex A55. The mode is 32 bit, but of course 64 bit is also supported. We can see the machine, the ABI, the instructions that are on there. And also very important guys, we can also check the clock speed. So from 208 megahertz up to 1600 megahertz. Then we see also some governance. We can also see the GPU, the Mali G68. This is the very same GPU that is used also in the Watch 5 Pro. And then we have also a bit more of the information like what the GPU supports in terms of extensions, the Vulkan, etc. And also the clock speed of the GPU starting from 208 megahertz to 702. If we go to the general, you can see this is the identifier, the Samsung SM L705F, we can see it here. Something that we already knew, the resolution of the screen a bit higher than the Watch 5 Pro, 480 by 480. The platform you can see, and also very important, the Android version of course is 14. It does use the very latest One UI 6. We can see also current information. We can also now check some very important information, like we can check the accelerometer, right? We know now that it is the LSM6DSO. I'm not so much into those things, but for some people, this could be important information. You can check also the gyroscope sensor, the barometer sensor, all right, and a bit more of the NFC, the audio, of course, confirmed two gigabytes of RAM. You can also check the type of flash that is used there, the Samsung ZX60MA. So other unknowns, so there are some unknown things. The SOC, I think we already checked. Now let's go to the system. Again, we have the device identifier, everything, of course, Samsung, release 14, the API, the code name, device project XTUL, of course, this stands for the Ultra. You can check some board information, platform information, Java VM. You can check also the security. So security patch level is brand new here. Then we have the baseband. And then we can check also the GPS version, the Bluetooth version, right? The build tag. And then of course, some other important information, fingerprint, it's not there. The build date, the builder, Google Play services, device feature, time zone, and etc. Right. Now let's go to the screen. So again, screen size is 480 by 480. The ratio is three by three. We, we can check the diagonal here is 53 millimeters you can check the screen size like 37 by 37 millimeters and the density which is 340 x 
HDPI, all right? So you can see the refresh rate, 60 Hertz, and then we can see the modes. There is only one mode, apparently. It is 480 by 480, the resolution, and also 60 Hertz. Now, let's go to the memory, guys. This is interesting. I only have half a gigabyte of a free memory. A lot of this is already used, and you can see the total memory. We know it's two gigabytes, and this is the indication down below. The internal storage, guys. So free, I have almost 20 gigabytes. I use something like two and a half gigabytes, and the total one here indicated is 22 gigabytes and then guys if i click of course on the camera there's gonna be nothing there now battery this is very good so i have 80 percent 79 percent health is good discharge again not charging the power source is the battery we can see the temperature of the battery also the voltage information and the charge speed something important the power profile is 578 we kind of know that the battery inside by some specification is 590 milliampere the exact very same battery as the watch 5 pro and then there is a nominal profile of 600 milliampere h now this here guys is interesting because this is the sensors and now we can confirm we have an accelerometer we have light sensor of course no proximity sensor you're not really using this against your head magnetometer we have also the gyroscope and then also the barometer guys so let's start first with testing the accelerometer so how do we test it like this right i'm just rotating the watch right and you can see that the football ball is moving here okay so first test of course is successful the second one is the light sensor all right and the way this works by the way if i move my hand close you can see uh, that we have a changing indication here so we kind of know that the sensor works and this sensor is also important right like night mode stuff like this proximity sensor it's not available so of course no readings are going to appear here then we have the magnetometer right and i don't really know how to test this but it's there and it seems to be working then we have the gyroscope <laughs> The gyroscope is interesting because you can rotate the watch where you want. It should maintain like this very same position and you can just see uh, all the three axes, uh, the X, the Y and the Z. And I do believe that we have then the barometer. So right now we have an indication of 947 millibar. Then we have the mount points in the storage. This is also interesting information. If somebody's interested, I guess a really standard stuff, of course, then we have information on the Wi-Fi. Okay, link speed right now I'm connected to a 2G Wi-Fi, so only 40 megabits. You can see the standards here, you can see the frequency, the channel. That's not so interesting. The Bluetooth, guys, is good. We have BLE, low energy, peripheral mode, multiple advertisement, um, offloaded filtering, offloaded scan batching. This should be using the latest Bluetooth. I think it's 5.4, high speed, long range. Like in GC, a lot of things are checked. No LE audio and LE audio broadcast. Then we have the input, of course. <laughs> yeah all via screen and then guys here codex pad under the codex if i choose audio nothing really happens here and then last but not least we have my apps which are the apps created by this developer i really recommend this is a good good tool so just for the fun let me try to install telegram i'm gonna install it as a split apk i'm gonna select the package and now the installation is going to hopefully proceed now the thing is guys those apks are meant to work on your phone so don't expect them to really work as intended on the watch we're doing it just for fun the idea is really to demonstrate that there are a lot of options now what is actually even more interesting is that you can use this method to install watch faces directly on your watch and you can see that the package has been installed and now when i go down below in my app drawer we should be able to see telegram yes it's here again these applications are not meant to be used on your watch what is really cool is that eventually you can get some of them to work and this is not so bad if you think about this the options really are there what is very important is that we can use this method to also guys sideload watch face and when you don't need the app at all you just hold like this and boom click uninstall do you want to uninstall this application it's going to be safely removed from your watch again what is important to know is that this tool exists and that you can do these things and hopefully in the future there's going to be some nice and custom watch faces to be sideloaded like this thank you so much for watching guys vst over and bye Hi.